welcome everybody. This is gonna be awesome. I went all the way to France. I am in, not Paris, France, but I am in France because I wanted to tell you about a really cool new device. Now, many of us know that there hasn't been a good cassette player recorder made in a long, long time. Pretty much none of the modern units cut it until these guys possibly we are rewind designed in france has somebody finally made a good cassette player you're not going to want to miss this let's find out this is recordology Is anybody making a good cassette player these days, specifically a portable Walkman type device? Up until now, the answer has been no. And hopefully that's all about to change with this We Are Rewind cassette player recorder portable now. Everybody's thumbs are busy typing, Techmon already reviewed this, Techmon already, yes, he did. However, this is the upgraded latest and greatest version, and I'm so excited to take a gander featuring stereo sound, rechargeable battery, wireless connectivity, Bluetooth, recording function, all the way from Paris, France. I am super, super excited, dare I say stoked, to check this out because in the analog slash physical media family of collecting, by the way, I got the orange or Sergey version. I think that looked coolest. We've been sorely missing a good cassette player. Not just portables, but even like any kind of cassette player. They just don't make, they're usually like a knockoff of a Tanishin type of mechanism and the quality is just lacking. So I really wanted to see what was the best that we as a society could do in terms of cassette device and I hope this is it. I hope, I hope, I hope this is it. And a big thank you to my friends over at We Are Rewind for sending us this sample to test. I am just so, so excited. We're going to run this up. We're going to do some direct feed sound tests between this and a couple vintage units and a cheap modern unit by another company and really see how it performs against the competition. So stay tuned for that. I am filming this a few days ahead of that though because I wanna spend some time getting to know this device, giving it a chance to sort of burn in as it were. Here's the manual, here's a pencil. Cause you know what? How are you gonna rewind those tapes kids? If you're a child of the 80s or 90s, this isn't for writing, it's for rewinding your tapes. <laughs> I love this cause it's a total, I can tell this is developed with passion by people of my generation, people that were, uh, you know, that knew the pain of rewinding an unspooled tape with one of these. I think that's fantastic. All right, first impression, it's heavy. It's very heavy metal construction from what I, th yeah, definitely metal construction. I love how boxy this is. Look at that, isn't that just cool? Oh my gosh, that looks so cool. There's a little access point for the motor. The buttons on top there, indicator lights for the battery and the Bluetooth. I love how chunky these buttons are. A great big window to see your uh, tape and the progress in terms of how far into it. The branding up there. Up on this side, we've got a volume control, a headphone jack. We've got a line input, which is awesome. And look at that, uh, USB-C charging port. I think that's so cool. This is, I am legitimately trembling with excitement uh, for what I hope to be a good performing quality cassette mechanism. I can tell you by weight alone, just feeling this, the quality in the cabinet is unlike anything. I mean, this is heavy in a good way. This is just so cool. Let's open it up there. You can see the motor there on the right. Oh, this is so cool. We got the, uh, the window does give us the ability to have a look inside. You can see it does indeed, of course, have a stereo head. There's the erase magnet as well. 
This is so cool. I am just so jazzed about this. I cannot wait to give it a listen. So let me spend some time with it. I'll let you know my initial thoughts and then we'll give it a thorough test compared to previous and past competitors. The question is, does it stand up to the retro units from the 80s and 90s when cassette players were in their prime? So we're gonna have to test a few things out for sure. Okay, I have now had it for several days and have enjoyed it for every moment that I've had it out of the package. It's just a fantastic, fantastic device. And my friends, I'm gonna prove it to you in a minute, but to begin with, I'm just gonna say at the outset here, we have found a good modern tape player and I didn't think we'd ever see one again. This thing sounds fantastic. I would say this sounds better than any portable that I have, including my vintage units. And we're gonna test it direct feed so you guys can hear it against everything from a cheap modern unit to a couple of vintage units as well. This form factor is gorgeous. It's heavy, a lot of metal. This, I think, is plastic. This may be, I'm not sure if that's, I think that might be plastic too. Um, the back panel is plastic, but the whole middle section is metal. It feels cold, it feels heavy, it feels right. And um, I, I love the fact it doesn't have a belt clip. I always would take those off because I never liked belt clips. I never wanted to wear it that way. It's not the most portable thing because you, you wouldn't put it in your pocket. It's a little too big for that. And these, you know, sharp square corners, you know, don't lend itself well to that. Uh, you just kind of take it where you want, set it on the table next to you, and it's, it's a portable, awesome unit. Now, I haven't tested the recording feature. We'll test that out. I haven't tested the Bluetooth out feature. I've just listened to a lot of tapes and it even drives my high impedance headphones, studio monitors brilliantly. It sounds great. The first maybe two seconds that I played the very first tape I put in it, there was some noticeable wow and flutter. But once all the grease got distributed, once the lubrication, the belts, everything kind of worked itself into its normal routine, that went away and never came back. So I am just enthralled with this thing. It is pricey. You know, it's anywhere from 159 to 160 something dollars. It is an expensive device to be sure. However, if you want a good portable, this may be it for you guys. And I think it's a beautiful, awesome device. I love the orange. Okay, let's go ahead and do some direct feed tests, some recording tests and go from there. Okay guys, it is time for the shootout. We are gonna pair these four Walkman type devices against one another in a direct feed sound test. So here's how this is gonna work. We're going to start with this and just kind of go down the line and the way I may edit it is kind of bouncing back and forth, we'll have to see. This is a early 90s high-end Walkman type device. This has Dolby B, although we will not be using Dolby on any of these. This is the only Dolby capable device. None of these can do it, including that. And uh, But it's a good quality player. This is back when Iowa was affiliated with Sony, the sort of the premium brand for Sony. This is a good, good Walkman. I have not featured it on the show yet, but trust me, it is sort of a gold standard for early 90s, kind of peak of the Walkman era technology. Next, we will be using my old friend, the Sharp. What model is this? I don't even know what model this is. Uh, but this is the one I literally had as a kid. I had two Walkmans. I had this and I had a Sony, I think it was an FM 2015. I don't have that anymore. But I did find another one of these a couple years back. You know, it was a cheaper unit. It doesn't even have rewind. It's got a one direction motor. And, um, you know, it's pretty basic. I like the volume slider. One thing, I, I, while I'm thinking of it, one thing that all three of these have that that doesn't have is a radio. I wish they would have put an AM FM radio. That would have been really, really good. So this is sort of early 90s high end. This is early 90s low end. And then <laughs> this is basically a, mo this is a modern Walkman type device. It's as cheap as they come. It, it just, you know, this has a mono head. These are all stereo. By the way, you will notice, you can see the flywheel here. It's plastic flywheel. Pretty common for especially cheap Walkman type devices. 
This guy has a nice heavy brass flywheel, which I think contributes to the higher quality sound. So anyway, those are the three devices we will be using. I'm going to kind of guess before I do any of these recordings and say that these two are gonna be pretty close. This one, probably a distant third place with this a very distant fourth place. For music, I'm going to be using a custom mixtape made by a friend of mine with some YouTube friendly music. We're gonna direct feed into my Zoom digital audio recorder, and we're gonna use the magic of editing to make it a nice sort of test bouncing around back and forth. Okay, the cassette we'll be using is actually a chrome tape a Memorex CDX2 90 minute tape, high bias tape, and this is a custom recording. This is high quality state tape stock. And like I said, it is a type two chrome tape, which basically means that the cassette player will need a different EQ setting in order to benefit from. Now the We Are, we, we Are Rewind unit says that it supports all tape types and the Iowa supports all tape types. So this will be interesting to see how it performs with that. This recording was made with no Dolby. So this is a Dolby free type two recording and the source material was a vinyl record and this was a very high quality transfer. So this should give us a good comparison of how these units compare with one another. ahead and test its recording capability. I'll be using this Klim CD player, what I hope to be fairly copyright friendly music, and a new old stock Scotch BX low noise normal bias type 1 tape. So what we're going to do is record from the CD into the device and then play you back a direct feed. Okay, we're ready, I believe. I'm going to go ahead and hit record. Maybe, is it, do I have to hit play record? Okay, do I have to press and hold it for a minute? Did I put the tape in backwards? What did I do wrong? Okay, the tape goes this way, tabs are not pulled. I'm gonna press. Okay, I think I might have had the tape backwards. I'm not 100% sure. I'm gonna let this record for a while and then we're gonna play back. This has an automatic uh, gain control on the inputs. The level will be automatically set is what I'm trying to say. So as long as you got a decent signal coming out of the source device, you will pick up a good signal here. The question is, will it throttle the gain up and down noticeably? That's a less desirable feature. When you're making a recording, you wanna have a gain control. However, for this level of uh, use case, I would say that should be fine. So let me go ahead and make the recording and we'll test it out. Okay, I had to actually go back after that shot and redo it because I had the volume turned all the way down on the CD player. But I fixed that. I made a good recording with this device. At least I hope so. I have not heard it yet. We're going to listen to it together as soon as I hit play. Another thing I want to bring up is this has a semi-auto stop, meaning that if you are in play mode and it's playing and it reaches the end of the tape, it will auto stop. However, if you're fast forwarding or rewinding and it gets to the end of the tape, it will not stop. It'll just sit there and squeal. 
I wish it had a full auto stop. A semi-auto stop is better than nothing, but save the belts on your unit. This has two belts in it, so you want to protect those belts. Don't let it sit there and squeal. I caught myself sitting there at my desk one time this week while I was listening to this, and I'm like, what is that squealing sound? Like, what? Do I need to put oil on my chair? What's going on? I realized it was this thing sitting there squealing for a good minute. So protect your belts. Don't let that happen to you. But without further ado, let's hit record on the recorder and play on the player and here we go. This is a playback of its own recording capability. Okay, the Bluetooth feature is absolutely awesome. So using this button right here, you can pair your device. See how it goes into pairing mode right there? And then once your uh, headphones or speakers are in range, you will hear an audible sound and it will the light will go solid and you will be able to listen wirelessly. That's something your old Walkman could never do. I think that's a very cool feature. Okay, so what did you guys think? Were you surprised? It sounds fantastic. The Iowa not too shabby. These ones, definitely lower end, but still fun. It's still enjoyment to be had out of any portable, I think. It's just fun, you know what I mean? One thing else I wanted to bring up too was motor noise. Now, I don't know if you heard any motor noise. You don't wanna hear that coming through the recording. Some of the cheaper ones can sort of bleed that motor noise through audibly through your headphones, which is not a good thing. But even in the room, just standing here, listening to these motors, grind away this thing was really really loud this thing you could hear audibly as well these two are definitely the quietest just not the audio signal but the actual just in the room what you can hear so as always i would love to get your comments down below let me know your walkman of choice or i say walkman your portable tape recorder player of choice or what you used to have and would you consider this thing i think that it is a magnificent cassette recorder and player absolutely fantastic i wish here's my wish list user replaceable battery it actually has i mean it's not too hard to get the battery out of here it's a uh, cylindrical battery kind of like double a shaped a little bigger than that right behind this panel right here it can be removed that's a trim pot for the motor speed we talked about that if you use like a guitar pick uh tool you can get this piece off Getting the front is a little trickier. You actually have to bend these tabs, and I wouldn't recommend doing that. It'll void your warranty. But if you know what you're doing, you can get in there and you can replace the battery. The battery life, four to five years, I would like to see it longer than that. That being said, I do like the idea of a, of a rechargeable battery. I think that's fantastic. The Bluetooth is nice, although I'll most likely go for the direct connection whenever possible. Just mostly blown away of how good it sounds. That was the big surprise. That's what mattered the most. So what do you guys think? If you're interested in getting your own, I'm gonna put a link in the description down below. All right, my friends, and that is going to do it for today. Was it worth traveling all the way to France for these intros and outros? I hope so. I really enjoyed the trip. It's a beautiful place. I love being here closer than I remember it being. But I hope you enjoyed this show, my friends. Happy record hunting. We'll see you next time.